I started going into this dark place that was like vibrating and it got darker and darker. I'm never gonna come back from this place. My family's the Fiddler on the Roof story where the pogroms were growing against the Jews and the Tsar was, they were attacking villages and, and they left with, with what they could carry. I grew up in what we affectionately called the Borscht Belt. My parents actually spoke Yiddish in the house. It was their secret language. I was raised a Zionist. We revolved around Israel. We went to synagogue on the holidays, Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur. I remember the sukkah in our backyard. Some of the fondest memories were going to camp at Habonim. And we'd sing Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom. We'd sing Hevenu Shalom Aleichem. Growing up in the 60s, I was influenced by what we called the love generation. I was doing LSD, cocaine, psilocybin, mescaline, methadrine, nembutal, secanol, tetrahydrocannabinol, and a few other things. If everybody in the world got stoned, the world would be a better place. Now that was a lie. We didn't know it at the time. I met my wife in 1967. We got initiated into transcendental meditation with Ma Maharishi Mahesh Yogi. And then we joined an ashram. I wore a turban, wrapped it every morning, wore all white, we called it our yoga whites. We had to bring fruit or flowers and let, lay them at the altar. Later I found out we were like bringing offerings to a Hindu god. And really what had happened is, is I had rejected my Judaism. And one day I was meditating, my eyes were closed, and I started going into this kind of like a dark place and it got darker and darker. And I remember my whole body began to shake. I was like vibrating. I thought for a moment, I'm never gonna come back from this place. I've gotta get out of here. We sold our cars and our goods and bought backpacks. And my wife and I set out on a quest to find truth. We went to London and we got lost. So some man comes out of the side street, tall guy with a beard. He starts talking to us about Jesus. Jesus isn't for Jews, so he can talk all he wants. He leaves, he comes back about 20 minutes later with a book. And the book is a book called The God Who Is There by a man named Francis Schaeffer. We go down to the Isle of Wight, which is in the, in the English Channel, and there's a big rock concert there. It's bigger than Woodstock. And we ended up camping next to two guys. They said, we found the Guru of the West. And I said, well, who's that? And he said, well, his name is Francis Schaefer. And I said, wait a minute. I went into my backpack and I pulled out this book and this guy right here, and sure enough, it was the same guy we just heard about two weeks before in London. Cool coincidence, you know, everything was groovy back then. And so we ended up uh, hitchhiking, Belgium, France, Denmark, Holland, and we go into a bookstore and the book right in the middle of the religious section said Labri, which was the name of the community that, where Francis Schaefer lived and there was a map how to get to Labri. We start hitchhiking and some guy picks us up and he takes us two hours out of his way all the way and dropped us off at the front yard of Labri. And we ended up staying. They start telling us about Jesus. And like the guy in London, I said, look, it, Jesus is, is not for Jews and we're Jewish. And they said, yeah, but he was a Jew. Another guy was there, great, expert, an expert on prophecy, and he starts reading scriptures to us about the prophets prophesying about a Mashiach that would one day come. And they're telling us about the Messiah, the Jewish Messiah. If you're Jewish, you probably have a Bible. You have a Tanakh somewhere or a Torah. Open up your Bible. Look at Isaiah 53. Open to Psalm 22. Open to Micah chapter 5. Look it up yourself. Tell me, what it says to you. We had a wonderful meal for Thanksgiving and Dr. Francis Schaefer is serving what they called communion. I didn't know what communion was. What is this? And he starts talking about Jesus dying on a cross. My eyes are closed. I'm sitting on the floor and I see this picture of Jesus on a cross. I'm looking straight up and there he is, he's crucified and he's bleeding. And when I looked up, a drop of his blood comes down and hits my forehead and splatters on my forehead. I jumped, I flinched, it startled me. Every time I look up, a drop of blood comes down and splatters on my forehead. Pretty soon my forehead began to be covered with blood. 
And all the discussion and all the debates about theology and anthropology and geology, we talked about the flood and about all kinds of things, it became personal and I realized that Jesus died for me. The people came out of, uh, Israelites out of Egypt and God gave them a system of how to come to him, how to approach him. And part of that system was sacrifice. The shedding of blood was necessary for the forgiveness of sin. But when Yeshua came, he was the sacrifice to end all sacrifices. I realized that what he did on the Tzlav, on the cross, was, was he forgave my sin. I mean, that's that new covenant that Jeremiah prophesied. I was a slave to sin, and now I am no longer slave to sin. My Jewishness is now more meaningful than ever before. You know, when a Jewish person accepts the Messiah, we don't change our religion. I feel more Jewish than ever before. We were Jewish, we, we drifted, and now we've come back again. We just accept our Messiah.